Say it with me, guys. Mass Effect 2. Did you guys say it? Hey, welcome to my Let's Play in Mass Effect 2, guys. So, we just wrapped up Mass Effect 1, and let me tell you something about Mass Effect 1. It's a pretty good game. In some ways, you could even say it's a great game. But I wouldn't say it's an amazing game. I like the way it closed out. There were problems with it, but, like, whatever. Mass Effect 2 is apparently the real deal. I've heard people say that this is their favorite game of the generation, so I'm going into this with pretty high expectations. And this is a completely blind Let's Play. Unlike Mass Effect 1, where I had a little bit of experience with it, I've never seen anything about this game, guys. I really only know, like, a handful of things about it, just stuff I've heard here and there, but by and large, this is 100% blind. So that's what you should expect out of this Let's Play. A couple other things I do want to go over real quick before we start. I just want to kind of put a disclaimer out there that, um... This is actually a real pain in the ass to get all the DLC installed for this game. <laughs> uh, I think it came out in 2011. It's published by EA, and you know how many dicks they suck on a daily basis. Um, all of like the in-game UI stuff for like the extra content just leads to like dead web servers. So, oh, and also the Steam version that I have that I'm playing on right now came with uh, no less than three different install keys. So. Yeah, it was kind of a nightmare. I want to give a shout out to a YouTube channel called Abe's Mission Control, who actually came out with a very helpful tutorial video on how to get all the Mass Effect 2 DLC installed in 2019. I referenced it while I was trying to figure all that stuff out. Um, and I gotta say that even with that very helpful tutorial, though, I'm not sure if everything is completely installed. Well, I should say, I think that everything is installed. Actually, I think that some things are installed twice, but I don't know if everything is authenticated. I'm not really going to know for sure until I get in here and actually, like, find the stuff in the game. So, we may have a little bit more work to do in terms of that stuff, but we're going to at least get started right now. And I also am running a number of mods, uh, primarily the controller mod, the a lot mod, which replaces a lot of the textures in the game to just make it look better than it did in the vanilla style, and a couple other things like that, shorter load times, uh, better lighting, stuff like that. So, this is like kind of a rickety House of Cards build I've got going on right here, and I'm really hoping that everything works out and doesn't come crashing down on me, but, you know, we're gonna have to find out together. So, let's just get started. New game, and of course we're gonna import our Mass Effect 1 character, who is Sheena Shepard, level 49, save 0. I don't know why it says save 0. I had like 150 saves in that game, but uh, hey, whatever. Okay, options. Combat difficulty, we'll just leave that on normal. Auto level up. Um, points are automatically assigned to appropriate talents each time a squad member gains a level. Points must be manually assigned using the squad screen whenever Shepard gains a level. So, I, the way I handled this in Mass Effect 1 was I did the squad only level up, and I kind of like that. I want to level myself up, but as far as the squad, I kind of just like letting the game handle that and just kind of do it the best way. So, we'll stick with that for now, I think. Subtitles, yes. Squad power usage. When enabled, squad members automatically use their most effective powers in combat. When disabled, squad members only use defensive and ammo powers automatically. Yeah, we'll leave that on. And auto saves, of course. Hopefully it's a little bit more generous in this game than it was in the first game. Service history. So, it's seen Sheena Shepard. I didn't quite make it to level 50, guys. I'm only level 49. Weak sauce. Um, oh! <laughs> I thought it was gonna let me go in there and like actually change things, but I hit A and it just kind of started the game. So I guess we can't change that stuff. Shepard did everything right, more than we could have hoped for. Commander Shepard uncovered the truth. And still, it's not enough. We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. That is Martin Sheen. But they're sending her to fight Geth. Geth? We both know they're not the real threat. The Reapers are still out there. And it's up to us to stop them. The Council will never trust Cerberus. They'll never accept our help, even after everything humanity has accomplished. But Shepard, they'll follow her. She's a hero, a bloody icon. But she's just one woman. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Then see to it that we don't lose her. 
He has mechanical eyes. Mechanical eyes Martin Sheen. That's his name. One month after the devastating Geth attack on the Citadel, humanity seized political control of the galaxy. Wow, this is scrolling really fast. Am I going to have time for this? Now the human-like councils forced to respond to evidence that the Reapers, enormous machines that eradicated all advanced civilizations every 50,000 years to have returned. And I really did not have enough time to actually read all that. This is one month after Mass Effect 1. That's the main takeaway there, guys. Disengaging FTL drives. Emission sinks active. Board is green. We are running silent. We're wasting our time. Four days searching up and down this sector, and we haven't found any sign of Geth activity. Three ships went missing here in the past month. Something happened to them. My money's on slavers. The Terminus system is crawling with them. Picking up something on the long-range scanner. Unidentified vessel. Hmm. Looks like a cruiser. Doesn't match any known signatures. That's my boy, Joker. Cruiser is changing course. Now on intercept trajectory. Can't be. Stealth systems are engaged. There's no way a Geth ship could possibly... It's not the Geth. Brace for evasive maneuvers! Uh, you better, goddammit. Get to the damn shuttles! I'll haul Joker's crippled ass out of here. Ding, that's racist. Shepard! Get the hell out of here! Everybody in! Man, stuff is popping off already, guys. This game is not screwing around. Look at my poor Normandy. It's beat all to hell. Control, mayday, journal updated. Mayday, mayday. This is Joker. We've suffered heavy damage from an unknown enemy. This is a lost cause, man. We gotta get out of here. Oh lord, we've lost pressure in here already. That is not good. How is Joker still alive? Look at this. I can talk to him from back here. Nope, gotta get a little closer. Oh, it kind of sectioned off the cockpit. Look at that. Come on, Joker. We have to get out of here. No, I won't abandon the Normandy. I can still save her. No, you really can't, dude. The Normandy's lost. Going down with the ship won't change that. Yeah, okay. Help me up. Thank God he's listening to reason. They're coming around for another attack. Watch the arm. 
No time to be gentle, buddy. Hmm, not 100% sure how I'm going to survive that. <laughs> Mass Effect 2. Subtitle, shit is popping off. So we got Joker to the escape shuttle, but... Okay, Mass Effect Genesis, interactive backstory comic? What? Just another routine mission. Why do they always say that before a mission? Of course it's routine, you haven't done anything yet. It's everything that happens along the way. The choices you make paths you choose that turn the routine into anything but. Of course, that's how it started. A routine mission. Answering a distress call. And look where that got me. We were testing out the Normandy, Captain Anderson's new ship, when the distress call came in. An Alliance patrol on Eden Prime had been attacked. They'd seen something they couldn't explain. Whatever it was, it was massive. I hit the ground with my lieutenant, Caden Alenko. A good kid. Loyal, by the book. With a talent for biotics. We came across the lone survivor of the patrol. Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams. A soldier to the core. Tough, disciplined. Ready to take on whatever came her way. Ashley joined up with us and took us to the spot where she lost her squad. That's when we saw it. The ship. Like nothing I'd ever seen. It was massive, scorching the colony and everything around it as it blasted away. We followed the path of destruction to an artifact, a beacon left by a long dead race called the Protheans. The colony had dug it up and whoever attacked them had tried to take it. Lieutenant Alenko made the mistake of getting too close. It hit him with some type of energy. I grabbed him and threw him out of the way. That's when it hit me. Hard. Every muscle in my body went rigid. I couldn't move. I could barely breathe. Everything went black. And then I saw something. Vision. Dream. A nightmare. By the time I woke up, we were halfway to the Citadel on our way to meet the Council. I was expected to explain what I'd seen. Anderson came along. So did Udina our political representative on the Citadel. With those two heavyweights, it seemed reasonable we could persuade the Council that the ship we'd seen was a potential threat, as was the individual behind the attacks. The main suspect for the Eden Prime Massacre was a Turian Spectre named Saren. He'd been seen by one of the survivors from the colony at Eden Prime, and there was some evidence to suggest that the ship was connected to Saren. But even Udina's pointed accusations weren't enough to convince the Council. They just couldn't believe one of their chosen elite specters could be guilty of something like that. They needed proof, which meant I needed proof. Fortunately, I wasn't alone in my search. Garrus, another Turian, wanted to help. A top agent for Citadel security. Despite orders from his superiors that he shouldn't get involved, he told me he was suspicious of Saren, and he had some useful leads. More importantly, he was willing to share them. That led me to Rex, the biggest, nastiest-looking Krogan bounty hunter I'd ever seen. He turned out to be more than just a brute. It was his intel that led us to a fugitive with incriminating evidence on Saren. A 
fugitive turned out to be an energetic little quarian named Tally. A tech expert with a knack for hacking, she procured some information on Saren. Evidence that proved Saren was dirty. Tally's evidence proved that Saren was responsible for the massacre on Eden Prime. And the immense warship we'd spotted was in fact Saren's flagship. But it went much further. Saren was trying to find a way to bring back a race of sentient machines from dark space. Machines allegedly responsible for cleansing the galaxy of all organic life. These Reapers were blamed for wiping out all life 50,000 years ago, including the Protheans, then disappearing back through the mass relays to dark space, leaving no trace that they'd ever been. That explained why Saren was after the beacon, and it made some sense out of my visions. Not much else. We couldn't convince the Council that the Reapers were a threat. But they agreed Saren had to be stopped. They stripped him of his Spectre status and gave me the honor of becoming the first human Spectre. My first task? Bring down Saren. Anderson decided to stay behind, giving up his ship, the Normandy. He told me I'd need it more than he would. He also pointed me in a direction. Liara. Prothean expert, adept in biotics, and maybe most importantly, daughter of Benezia, Saren's top lieutenant. And like most Asari, as beautiful as she is intelligent, and born with a unique ability to meld with other species, Bow -chicka -bow -wow. was able to help me decipher some of the vision the beacon had given me. Nothing concrete, but it gave me some clues. And a new appreciation for the Asari. Her technique for accessing my vision was unexpected, but not at all unpleasant. Caden was a little concerned about the connection I shared with Liara. As commander, I knew either relationship had the potential to interfere with the mission. I told Liara about how I felt. Apparently, she felt it too. But we agreed we wouldn't let it get in the way of our mission, finding Saren. Thanks to Liara's help, we had our next lead, Benezia. Saren had taken her to Novaria, where he'd enslaved the queen of a dangerous race of insect-like creatures, the Rachni. He ordered Benezia to use the same technique Liara had used on me to extract information from the Rachni queen. The queen's drones were everywhere, and they were not happy. We had to fight through hundreds of them to get to Benezia. By the time we arrived, Saren was gone, with the information. I tried to reason with Benezia. But Saren had indoctrinated her. He'd somehow acquired the ability to control people's actions and wills. Benezia wouldn't surrender, and Liara was forced to watch her mother die in her arms. And I was left with an angry, dangerous Rachni queen to deal with. She claimed her drones would do no harm if I released her. But the Rachni had terrorized the galaxy before. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't doom an entire species for past sins. And the queen was true to her word. She left and took her army of drones with her. With Saren's top lieutenant dead, he was quickly running out of time and places to hide. I tracked him down at his base on Vermeer, But we soon learned it was more than a base of operations. It was a breeding ground. Saren was breeding an army of Krogan. He'd found a cure for the genophage. A disease inflicted on the Krogan to prevent them from breeding and taking over the galaxy. But the Krogan Saren was breeding were slaves. Mindless beasts that obeyed Saren's will. I had to destroy the base and all its research. Rex disagreed. Violently. Rex wanted the genophage cure for his people. I tried to convince him to help me destroy it, that these Krogan weren't real. But he wouldn't back down. Fortunately, Rex is smarter than he looks. He realized this wasn't the way to help his people, and that Saren was the real threat. When we finally got to the center of the base, I realized just how close Saren was to completing his plan. He was already in communication with the Reapers. Sovereign, Saren's flagship we'd all assumed was just a ship, was a Reaper. It spoke to me, threatened me. I could feel the menace it had for every living thing. It wanted me dead. It wanted us all dead. And I knew it was capable of doing just that. What I couldn't understand was why Saren would help it. 
But there was no time to think about it. Sovereign knew where we were. We had to destroy the base and get the hell out. I split my team into two squads, sending Ash with one and Caden with the other as a distraction. We had a nuke and we planned to use it. Before we could detonate the bomb, Saren showed up. We fought. I stalled him to make time for my team. And in talking to him, I realized the truth. It wasn't Saren who was indoctrinating everyone. It was Sovereign, the Reaper. And Saren was in deeper than all of them. He tried to convince me he was still in control. Said he'd found a way to reduce the Reaper's influence. But he was kidding himself. Or believing the lies Sovereign was telling him. Before I could convince him to stop, he ran. Leaving me just seconds to extract my squad mates. I tried. But it wasn't fast enough. I could only save one of them. Caden was a good man. And a great soldier. But I had to choose. And I chose Ash. That was the last time Saren would slip away from me. I knew then, the next time we met, one of us would die. With my team mostly intact, we chased Saren and his army to Ilos, a long-lost planet that had once belonged to the Protheans. As we prepared for what we knew would be a desperate fight, I spoke to my crew. We were just one ship, against Saren's growing army. I assured them all that despite the odds, we could defeat him. Liara saw through my words. She knew I was hurting after Caden's death. She could sense my doubts. We both knew this mission could be our last. Until that moment, we put our feelings aside for the sake of the mission. But why wait? We gave in to each other. And it was perfect. While it lasted. We arrived on Ilos close behind Saren. Once on the planet, we discovered a Prothean databank that helped me put the final pieces of my vision together. The Reapers had come 50,000 years ago, and every 50,000 years before that, each time purging the galaxy of life. The Protheans had fought and died like every species before them, but a few survived long enough to leave a parting gift. The Protheans had discovered that the Citadel was the key to controlling the mass relays. By sabotaging the Citadel, they found a way to close the relays to dark space. Slowing the Reaper's return, giving us the time we needed to find a solution to stop the Reapers, once and for all. Saren knew this. He was leading his army to take control of the Citadel and re-establish the relays to dark space. Bringing the waiting Reapers here to destroy us all. We followed him to the Citadel. It was intact, but heavily damaged. He'd caught the Council fleets by surprise, and they were only now regrouping. And with Sovereign as his flagship, there was little hope that the fleets could counterattack with enough strength to take back the Citadel. But Saren was done running, and I was done chasing him. As the Alliance and Council fleets battled Saren's army outside the Citadel, I cornered the Turian bastard in the Citadel Tower and confronted him. He died believing that the Reapers would save him. As I fought to regain control of the Citadel, the Council's flagship, the Destiny Ascension, fell under attack. Despite Saren's death, Sovereign and Saren's army continued to fight. The Council was aboard the Destiny Ascension, and they were requesting assistance. But I knew in order to help them, I would have to put our Human Alliance fleet in jeopardy. The Council could be replaced, but the fleets were needed here and now if we were going to defeat Sovereign. Even with the Citadel back in my control, Saren defeated and the Normandy leading the combined galactic fleet. The battle against Sovereign, a single Reaper, was relentless. It took the combined fleets of humanity and the other races, but in the end, Sovereign fell. The costs were immense. While humanity's efforts in the war earned us our first seat on the Council, it was a hollow victory. The Reapers were still out there. I knew the fight was far from over, but as the one who'd led the fight against Saren, I was given new responsibilities. The choice of humanity's first counselor was left to me to decide. On the one hand, Udina, the lifetime politician, ruthless and ambitious, he would easily navigate the political landmines that would soon be placed before him. The other choice, Captain Anderson, the career soldier, tough but fair but a friend, 
and someone I could trust. Both great leaders in their own right. Oh, look at this. I get to make this choice again? I guess because you never get to save after you make this choice in the first game, huh? And it just grabs your most recent save, but it doesn't include this. So we're going to pick the same thing we did last time, and that's Captain Anderson, because fuck that other guy. Anderson didn't want the job, which was a sure sign he'd be perfect for it. No ambition to get in the way. The war was over. The threat had passed. In time, the Council would rebuild itself. The Citadel could be repaired. Even the pain of lost friends would fade. But none of that mattered if the Reapers were still out there. And if they were all as powerful as Sovereign, we had to find a way to stop them. I had to find a way. I gathered my crew, took my ship, and went in search of answers. Officially, the Council would only say I was assigned cleanup duty. Routing out any remnants of Saren's army. Just another routine mission. That was a very thorough and excellent recap. And I like the whole comic format, too. Commander Shepard has been recovered. The Lazarus Project will proceed as planned. Lazarus Project. This is really weird, guys. So they're basically turning me into the bionic woman. Facial reconstruction. Choose the default or custom procedure. Yeah, well, we're going to accept the imported face. Choose class enhancement procedure. Oh, so see, this is what I thought we were going to be able to do in the beginning of the game, but I guess we can actually change our class here. So I played as Vanguard in the first game. Let's just go through these, see if these are any different, really. Soldier is high-level operatives, outfitted with ocular synaptic pro processors that allow them to focus on targets with lethal accuracy. Power training, adrenaline rush, concussive shot, assault rifle, shotgun, sniper rifle, heavy pistol. These guys get to use everything, man. Ammo training, incendiary, cryo, and disruptor. Soldiers are pure combat specialists. No one is tougher or more effective at taking down enemies with gunfire. Soldiers have the most thorough weapons training and can use all special ammo types. So I hear that the gunplay in this game is a lot better than the first one, and that kind of makes soldiers sound kind of appealing, but I like having at least the option to do some other stuff too. Infiltrators are equipped with cloaking systems that allow them to avoid detection for short periods of time, granting a tactical advantage over enemies, so they're like the rogues. Tactical cloak, incinerate, AI hacking, they get to use snipers, heavy pistols, submachine guns. Oh, that's that actually sounds pretty fun. Infiltrators are tech and combat specialists with the unique ability to cloak themselves from visual and technological detection. Infiltrators are deadly at close range with a wide variety of weapons, equipment, and powers that can take down any enemy. Hmm. That does sound appealing, guys, but let's keep going. Vanguards are outfitted with L5N implants, enabling them to perform a biotic charge that strikes the opponent with incredible force while bringing the Vanguard in close for short-range combat. They can do biotic charge, pull, and shockwave. Shotguns, heavy pistols, submachine guns. So, in addition to the shotgun and pistol, we get a submachine gun in this game. I do like that. We get incendiary and cryo. Vanguards are feared for their high-risk, high-reward combat style, closing quickly on enemies and destroying them at close range with weapons and biotic abilities. And we also have sentinels. They're equipped with the most advanced ablation armor system to keep themselves safe. If overloaded, the system will stun all enemies within a short distance. Oh, that's a neat trick. Tech armor, throw, warp, overload, cryo blast. They get a lot of good power training. Heavy pistol and submachine gun, not a lot of options on the weapons though. Sentinels are unique, bringing both tech and biotic abilities to the battlefield. While they lack the focus of adepts and engineers, they are versatile and can handle any situation. Okay. Adepts are outfitted with L5X implants that can spawn a micro-singularity, damaging enemies and pulling them into the air. That sounds dope. 
Singularity, Warp, Throw, Pull, Shockwave, Heavy Pistol, Some Machine Gun. Adepts are biotic specialists capable of disabling and killing enemies with raw biotic power. While they lack advanced combat training, they are the best at defeating enemies without firing a shot. So these are like the raw magic users. Then engineers can spawn combat drones to harass enemies or force them out of entrenched cover positions. Combat drone, overload, incinerate, AI hacking, cryo blast, heavy pistol, submachine gun. Damn, you know, if they got more weapons than that, I probably would have went with this class, honestly. Engineers are tech specialists, the only class able to employ combat drones on the battlefield. Engineers are the most effective class of blasting through enemy defenses and disabling opponents. So this class sounds really fun. But man, I just, I wish there was like either a sniper or a shotgun on top of what they can use. I might stick with the Vanguard and just kind of try to be like a jack of all trades again. I'll still get to use my shotguns. Uh, I don't know. There's things about like all these classes that I want to use. This is actually a really hard choice for me, guys. Should I worry about the... The weapons so much as I should worry about the power training, I wonder. I mean, if I'm really concerned about the weapons, I should just be a soldier, but like... Some machine gun sounds pretty fun, too. Like, I wouldn't mind using that for the majority of the game. I would assume. Like, it sounds fun. Ah, oh, shit. And I've heard that this overload ability is really good. They also get AI hacking, cryoblast. Combat drone sounds really fun to just send that guy out and have him do your dirty work for you. You know what, guys? I think I am going to go with engineer. I hate losing the shotgun, but this just sounds like such a fun class to play as. Screw it, man. Let's give it a shot. Profile registration complete. Press A to confirm or B to go back. Sheena Shepard, Earthborn, Ruthless Engineer. It kind of makes sense that now that I'm all biotic and shit, I would be, like, more tech adept, right? That kind of makes sense in my head. Once you confirm your character is complete, you will be unable to change any settings. Alright. It'd be a really nice surprise if I found out that I could, like, still learn how to use shotguns with this class. Sir, on the monitor. Something's wrong. She's reacting to outside stimuli. Showing an awareness of her surroundings. Oh my god, Miranda. I think she's waking up. Damn it, Watson. She's not ready yet. Give her the sedative. Shepard, don't try to move. Just lie still. Try to stay calm. Heart rate's still climbing. Brain activity is off the charts. Stats pushing into the red zone. It's not working. Another dose. Now. Heart rate dropping. Staff's falling back into normal range. <laughs> it's too close. We almost lost her. I told you your estimates were off. Run the numbers again. Yeah, Wilson. Get your head out of your ass. I'm level 2 already, guys. Experience gained, 190 Renegade. Holy, look at this. 176 Paragon. Element 0. Platinum. What is all this stuff? Is this all stuff I brought in from the first game, I guess? Mad money? Alright, well, you're really throwing me into this really quickly here. Focus, Shepard. Get the pistol and armor from the locker. This pistol doesn't have a thermal clip. It's a med bay. We'll get you a clip from... Damn it! Those canisters by the door are going uh, Keep your head down, Shepard. Shield yourself from the blast. Ow! I mean, oh, they want me to use this cover up here. Okay. Someone's hacking security, trying to kill you. Look for a thermal clip for your pistol. Walk over the thermal clip near the door. Looks like they set up a barricade to try holding the mechs off. 
Do I really have to reload in this game? I thought we did away with all that. <laughs> Yeah, that already feels way better. Holy God. Do I have to run around with my pistol out the whole time, though? Whoa, what'd I do? I'm doing things and I don't know what. <laughs> Is that my combat drone? I just hit Y and that happened. Yeah, my face did not escape unscathed, guys. I've got some scars. I somehow look even more badass now. Easy peasy, baby. Ah, what? You little bitch. Nice work, Shepard. Thanks, Miranda. You seem like a nice lady. Pretty easy on the eyes, too. Too bad I already have a girlfriend. Assuming she survives. Who was attacking me? Guys, who blew up my ship? The Normandy. I really want to know. Didn't seem like it was Geth. Because they just came out of nowhere and freaking rocked my face. And the Geth aren't normally that capable. Feels really weird having to scrounge for ammo. What is this? Okay, that lady got shot in the face. Can I pick this up? I'm not sure what the deal with that is. More reinforcements heading your way. Ooh. Here come the mechs. Use the I have a grenade launcher? Grenade launcher to take them out. Uh yes, please. Is it selected? Oh no, this is the grenade launcher. Oh, this is fucking awesome. Oh, that is awesome. The elevator down one floor. Guys, I have a grenade launcher. This is already the superior game to Mass Effect 1. Didn't take long. Although, I really wish I knew how to put my gun away. This feels really weird. Whoa. Okay, I'll figure that out later, I guess. I'm gonna save those grenades. Hurry, get to the door. Run. Brody, run! Okay. I'll find you and save you, Miranda. It's kind of what I do. Whoa. Cerberus laptop and data logs? Engaged. Uh huh. Okay. Progress is slow, but subject shows signs of recovery. Major organs are again functional, and there are signs of rudimentary neurological activity. In an effort to accelerate the process, we've moved from simple organic reconstruction of the subject to biosynthetic fusion. Initial results show promise. So I was their guinea pig. Seems like they made me better, though. So like. Guess I shouldn't be mad. Okay, am I in freaking Cerberus? Is that what this place is? Cause, damn. Progress is slow, but subject shows signs of recovery. Okay. Major organs are again functional. Highlight individual nodes to find matching symbols. When you found two matching symbols, select them to complete the circuit. Complete all circuits before you run out of time to bypass security. Our first hacking mini game, guys. Highlight the nodes. Okay, it's a matching thing. Uh, damn, this is, this is a thing, for sure. Okay, these two. Little battery looking thing. The Ys. Got it. That was easy level, right? 975 credits!
Yeah. Don't we all know that feel, buddy? Is that me? I feel very exposed. Okay. That was a good room, but let's move on. The hacking game is very different. Yikes. He just looked at me like, you're next, bitch. Public computer. Yikes! You left that on a public computer? Wilson's got some balls, man. Come on over. Shut got your back! Let's do this! What are you doing here? I thought you were still a work in progress. I don't have any idea what's going on. Look, pal. I don't know where I am or how I got here. Plus, my head feels like an overripe melon ready to split open. How about you fill me in a little? Damn. Yeah, I forgot this is all new to you. Sorry about that. I'm Jacob Taylor. I've been stationed here for- Hostiles detected. Damn it! Things must be worse than I thought if Miranda's got you running around. I'll fill you in, but we better get you to the shuttle first. Okay, but in true Mass Effect fashion, let's just have a few questions first. I know this isn't the best time, but I'm sick of stumbling around when I don't know what's going on. Fair enough. I'll give you the quick version. You and your ship were attacked and destroyed. You were killed. Dead as dead can be when they brought you here. What? Our scientists spent the last two years putting you back together. You've been comatose, or worse, that whole time. Welcome back to your life. Wow, so I was actually dead, and you guys brought me back to life. And it's been two years. That's a lot to take in. This doesn't look like an Alliance facility. It isn't. I can't say much more than that for now. The Alliance officially declared you killed in action. The whole galaxy thinks you're dead. And if we don't get to those shuttles, they'll be right. Yeah, that's because you guys are Cerberus. The fuckers killed Kahoku. I haven't forgotten that. Were there any other survivors from the Normandy? I'll tell you what. You help me finish off these mechs, and I'll play 20 questions with you all day. We're low on thermal clips, but I'm a biotic. Just give the order when you want me to hit him with the good stuff. <laughs> nice. Firing. Okay, how about this? Don't ever stop hitting them with the good stuff. Careful. Access power wheel, select pool, which is right here. Map power to left. Is that what that meant? Or just use power? That didn't work. Okay. Back. Can I just use that over and over? Have a nice, trip. nice! Okay. I promised I'd answer your questions. What do you want to know? Everything. There's so much to talk about. What's your job here? Depends on who you ask. Technically, I'm Miranda's top lieutenant. But I'm just a soldier. I served five years in the Alliance before this. Now I'm in charge of the station's security. Usually a lot more dull than this. Normally I don't fire my gun unless it's target practice. Well, you're getting some target practice in today, buddy. You said they spent two years rebuilding me. How bad were my injuries? I'm no doctor, but it was bad. When I first saw you, you were nothing but meat and tubes. Anywhere else, they'd have put you in a coffin. But Project Lazarus was different. Cutting edge technology. What can you tell me about the project? Were there other test subjects? Project Lazarus only had one subject. The whole point was to bring you back. Just you. Even that was a challenge. Two years. All the top scientists. The best technology money could buy. Yeah, I must have been real messed up, guys. I got flung out of an exploding spaceship and then fell into some planet's orbit, it looked like. So, yeah. What do you mean, cloning? Cybernetics? I don't know the details, you'd have to ask the scientists. But I'm pretty sure you're not a clone. They wanted to bring you back exactly as you were. You're still you. 
You just might have a few extra bits and pieces now. Yeah, I was gonna say, they messed up on my face then, because that is definitely not exactly the way it was. Do you know anything about this attack? Who's behind it, what they're after? Dan Fino. I was getting ready for some shut-eye, then BAM! Bunch of explosions. Next thing I know, every damn mech in the place starts shooting. At us. I'm guessing it had to be an inside job. You'd need top security access to hack all the mechs. Hmm. Interesting. The last thing I remember is the Normandy blowing up. Did anyone else make it? Just about everybody survived. A few servicemen from the lower decks didn't get out. Navigator Presley was killed by an explosion. No. Everyone else, including the non-alliance crew, the Asari, Liara, and the Quarian, they all made it out alive. I noticed that you didn't mention Rex. He better still be alive, too. Do you know what any of them are doing now? I don't know, Commander. It's been two years. They've moved on. Left the Alliance. Could be anywhere. So this is what they came up with to justify the fact that I have to rebuild my crew. <laughs> they were my team. If they knew I was alive, they'd come back. Maybe you can track them down after we get off the station. If we get off the station. That's the plan, buddy. Guys, look at my armor. That looks sexy as hell. I love that. When I first woke up, someone named Miranda was talking to me over the radio. We lost contact just before I ran into you. Miranda Lawson is the station's ranking officer. She led the Lazarus team. It was her job to bring you back to life, no matter what. Should have guessed she'd try to save you. She's not about to give up on you now. You said you lost contact. Could you tell what was happening? Uh, there was some gunfire and an explosion right before I lost her. She knows how to take care of herself. But I hope she's okay. Yeah, something tells me she will be. What's the quickest way to those shuttles? Depends where the mechs are thickest. It's probably best if check, we... Check, check. Anyone on this frequency? Anybody still alive out there? Hello? Wilson, this is Jacob. I'm here with Commander Shepard. Just took out a wave of mechs over in D-Wing. Shepard's alive? How the hell... Never mind. You need to get her out of there. Get to the service tunnels and head for the network control room. Roger that, Wilson. Stay on this frequency. I think I remember a Wilson checking on me one time when I woke up. That's him. He's the chief medical tech. Answers directly to Miranda. Come on. The service tunnels are this way. Alright. I guess I've squatted up with Jacob here. Activate open logs, data pad. Log update. The Lazarus project is about to enter the final phase. It's taken nearly two years, but we did it. Commander Shepard is alive. This is the most amazing medical achievement in recorded history. Maybe now Miranda will finally show some appreciation for everything I've done. Yeah, but probably not. Wow. Okay, this game does not screw around, guys. They've really just thrown us into the frying pan here. But I love it. So let's see. Can I save? This looks very familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, let's go ahead and create a new save here. That goes a lot faster. I appreciate that. If I go under squad, here's me. Hey, look, I have two squad points. Um, I don't really know how this works just yet. Looks like it's a tiered system. More points to upgrade every level. One point, then two points, then three, then four. Tech mastery. Makes your creative powers faster, flashier, and more frequent. Flashier. Gotta love it when it's flashier. Okay, well, let's do one into overload. Oh, wait, that took two, because I already have level one. Gotcha. Yep, that makes perfect sense. I just wasn't looking at it right. Okay. So, overload's at level two now, I guess. In addition to massive damage on shields and synthetic enemies, Overload now briefly stuns synthetic foes if the target's resistance are down. Nice, so that's just like a good all-around thing. And then Jacob over here has some stuff too. Okay. Really loving how fast that is. Gonna be doing that a lot. Okay, so this is probably a... Whoa, Jacob, settle down. We're, uh, <laughs> we're not in combat right now, buddy. <laughs> the only thing that's weird so far is I can't figure out how to put my gun away. I don't really want to run around the whole game with my gun pulled like this. But, yeah, I guess I'll figure that out later. Uh, this is cool so far, guys. Really, really liking this. Huge improvement over the first game in terms of the combat systems, the UI, things like that. Obviously, it looks a little better. 
Uh, it's just good stuff. We've gotten a little bit of everything so far. A little bit of combat, a little bit of dialogue. We got a really good recap of the first game. A little bit of story going on. So uh, I think this is a good point for me to wrap up this first video, guys. I want to say thanks a lot for watching. I'd appreciate it if you gave the video a like. Helps out my channel. And uh, we'll continue along with Mr. Jacob here when we get back. Thanks. See you then.